Starting lineups and for Marquette, Justin Lewis leads the team in scoring, averaging better than 15 points per game. And for Villanova, Cowan Gillespie third in the conference in scoring. Justin Moore comes in at number six. First of two meetings this season between Villanova and Marquette, and we're underway with Marquette controlling the opening tip. Let's see what the first offensive set. A lot of motion away from the basketball. This is one of the things you have to keep the pressure on the Villanova defense by being active with the basketball. And nearly a turnover, but Tyler Kolek able to save it. Good help out in the perimeter already. Shot clock at five. Lewis from the outside. So it wasn't a real pretty start for Marquette to get it started, but they were patient enough, and now it gives them the opportunity to go 1-2-2 two, two full court. Keep in mind, this is to take some time off the clock. And Jay Wright wants him to make sure his team is ready to attack because they've just taken, you know, half the clock, shot clock down. That's exactly what Jay told us last night, that they worked at practice this week and getting into their sets quickly. And there is Eric Dixon getting to work quickly. And as A.J. mentioned, a vital part to their offense to be able to put the ball down on the blocks. Every one of these guys are good passes out of the post. This time, Lewis misfires from deep in the long rebound. Comes out to Brandon Slater. The passing against Butler the other day for going over. Exquisite in terms of the decision-making. Look at them going around the horn twice. And Moore caps it off. And he just continues to shoot the basketball from long range. We featured him on the open for a moment. Just very confident in their offensive sets as a team. During this six-game win streak, Moore shooting 45% from deep. Kolick trying to answer, and he does. Tyler Kolick from the outside. Yeah, nice to get a shot to go down from the outside for him. He's known for his passing. Terrific assist-turnover ratio. But has struggled from deep just yeah, 23% sure has. Yep. on the season. Two minutes in, Gillespie launches. And the rebound is grabbed by Marquette. Pretty good effort defensively just then going 1-2-2, one, two, two, coming back to man-to-man, -to -man, but they lost Gillespie there for a second. He usually knocks that one down. Lewis draws the double, and he stepped out. And turnover by Justin Lewis. As you see, Shaka Smart in his first year at Marquette. Madison, Wisconsin native. And his team has put together a four-game win streak. And during this streak, they've averaged 85 points per game. And he also mentioned the being ready to play in this first five minutes. You don't want to really get into trouble early against Villanova here on the road. Samuels wow. rises, but is rejected by Queth. Great challenge defensively. Per Queth is second in the Big East, averaging close to three blocks per game. There's Marcel, who's been very active with the basketball offensively. Prosper with the left hand off glass. Olivier Maxence Prosper. So one of the key things for Marquette is do not turn the basketball over in bad situations. So far they've been looking for one of them, but very active. And this 1-2-2 two, two continues to take time off the shot clock for Villanova. And Jay Wright referred to it as short, shortening the clock, and they've done that now. Shot clock at 10. Gillespie doesn't get the bounce. Samuels the offensive rebound. Now Moore again from the outside. Not this time, and Queth is there. Everybody gets a touch on the offensive end, though, with Villanova off that second chance opportunity. Bullock will take that jumper, and it's tipped over to Moore. Villanova in that blowout victory on Sunday against Butler, a 40-point win. They were just exceptional at both ends of the floor. Butler just could not get on track at all. Villanova has missed four consecutive shots. Reaction very good on the perimeter for Marquette, though. Shot clock at four. Moore. 
Knocks it down with the shot clock set to expire. The good teams, Andrew, will be able to, and I always say this about the San Antonio Spurs, they're willing to make passes with five seconds left in the shot clock, even three over the years. The good teams in Villanova is one of them. will pass the basketball and look for an opening. Guards are so composed. Pretty wet throws it down. Pretty cut, little slide cut to the basket by Quest. Marquette has come out a little differently against Villanova than what Butler did the other day, yeah, Sunday. No doubt about it. Villanova jumped over Butler from the start. But tonight, great energy from Marquette out of the gate. Moore penetrates inside, and he's able to finish. That's where he's mixing it up so much better. You see him coming around the corner just then with Cleth on his back, understanding that he can use his strength going to the basket to make things happen. Moore has scored the last seven points for Villanova. Pretty good pace here without any whistles, huh? Yeah, over five minutes in. Lewis from the corner. Another three for Justin Lewis. He shoots it just under 30%, but he is a go-to guy. Shaka Smart said they'll call his number all night long. He is from Baltimore and has approximately 30 family and friends in attendance tonight, making the short drive from Baltimore. Can you find them? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. Wow. Queth again. Second block for Kerr Queth. And what a start here on CBS Sports Network. And as you mentioned, getting the guys the chemistry at the offensive end is taking a little time. But both of these teams have turned that corner. Shaka Smart said Villanova is very connected defensively. But right now, it's Marquette up 13 to 9. Shot clock at 4. That was good after defensively. Slater has to put it up, and it won't go. Plus on the defensive glass, Marquette is right there. Villanova not a factor so far on the offensive misses. Oso Iguodaro has checked into the game for Marquette along with Greg Elliott, and we have a foul. And there's an opportunity to watch. See, they, they switch out front. That was a switch right there to make sure that they're contesting Gillespie as much as possible, not leaning towards him with the jump. Hands straight up, well defended by two guys on the perimeter. First foul of the game is called on Brandon Slater of Villanova. Well, we're calling fouls tonight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a quiet night <laughs> so far. It'll be the kiss of death, right? Of course. Darryl Moore sells three straight away, and it's no good. Cleared by Samuels. Myself coming up 26 against Seton Hall. That's on his career high. Great defense by Greg Elliott, the veteran. Playing in his 101st career game. Lewis with the up fake. Daniels bit, but Lewis could not connect. Nice defensive work there by Gillespie on the defensive glass. Good bo box out and retrieval of the basketball. You see the half court right now. Villanova will get into this much quicker. But a little deflection, one of the things they track. Marquette tracks the deflections. They want 30 per game. And they're averaging 30 per game. Daniels from long range. And Iguodaro is going to be called. Oh, no, they're getting Villanova. I think there was an early grab there along the waist. It's going to go on Samuels, and now he's going to come out of the game. So watch down low. Yeah. There's the grab on the arm. Good call from the officials. Watch in this backcourt, too, with Kolek, Andrew. Remember, Jay Wright mentioned how he triggers the offense. Very, very good in terms of what he does. A key to their offensive sets because he knows how to release the ball as Villanova goes 2 3 defense right now. Nice cut. And the finish by Morcel. Boy, a great reaction to go to the free throw line and a better reaction to cut and slice from the right wing. And it's like they were sitting there waiting seven, seven and a half minutes for the first time to go up against the zone. Boy, was that ever efficient. And Villanova has cooled off offensively after making their first two. They're now two for their last nine. Dixon had it poked away out of bounds. How about the finish off the cut? Yeah, a little. It's going to come from the middle of the floor, and then you're going to have a cut right here to the basket. All right, nobody home defensively from Villanova on that, but that was... Hey, we're ready for it. First time, we're going to go to the middle of the floor and then kick it to the lane. Prosper returns and checking in is Stevie Mitchell from Redding, Pennsylvania. Attended Wilson High School. He's got about 30 
family and friends in attendance tonight. Shot clock at 11 for Villanova. Gillespie comes off the screen, and his three won't go. So a bit of old start. Yeah, here's that push. Pretty good transition defense. Marcel attacking Gillespie, sends it back out. Prosper will reset. Gotta get out of that lane. Eight minutes into the first half. Iguodaro, shot was altered by Antoine. Boy, the activity, though, on the offensive end is pretty good. I like the fact that Marquette, every guy who touches it just about, every time he touches it, he does something with the ball, kind of like going over. Wow. Daniels way off. And it's now six straight misses from three for the Wildcats. Elliott. Iguodaro fighting on the block, out of bounds. And it'll be Villanova basketball when we come back. But a great start for Marquette. Yeah, pretty good comfort level. Picking them apart defensively. Points for the Wildcats. The rest of the team has combined for two points on one of nine shooting. Villanova normally reliable from the outside. Just one of seven from deep. Yeah, coming off a terrific shooting performance against Butler from the three-point strike, too. Yeah, 12 out of 19 yeah. in Sunday's victory. And the bigs are active on the perimeter for Marquette. And the shot clock starts to wind down again. This is probably the fourth time possibly in this first half. And a little reach. And a foul on Stevie Mitchell. Yep, gets himself in trouble there. He had him positioned fairly well until the hands came out. Makes it so easy for the official to make that call. Pennsylvania Gatorade Player of the Year last season at Wilson High School in Reading, a 2,000-point scorer. As Elliott heads to the bench. Villanova in a scoring drought of just over four minutes. Wow, that was up to Krebs that flip just then. Samuels attacks and lays it in, and finally the drought is over. And Samuels using that body to cut across the middle of the lane, but every time they catch it on the perimeter, is good activity. And also, you have to remember there are shot blockers in length behind them. There's Mitchell to the hoop, and his shot is off the mark. He was looking for a call just then. It's a pretty good move out front. See if Villanova can get a good shot, get some connect consecutive opportunities to score. Moore from the outside is good. And he's in double figures with 10 points. Now all of a sudden that gives you a little rhythm to your offensive sets. Midway through the first half, a one-point game. Morcel trying to answer, and he does. Oh, yes, he's been playing well. Career high four threes in the win on Saturday over Seton Hall. And how about five 20 point games this year already for Marquette? And he's at Maryland 126 games. <laughs> he didn't get 20 points or more. We asked Shaka yeah. Smart about that, and he said, Look, when he was on some really good Maryland <laughs> teams, guys that are in the NBA right now, he was the fourth or fifth scoring option. Here, we want to get him the ball, and he has made the most of his opportunity. Yeah, he's a lockdown defender, too. But look at the length on this three. Great-looking shot, rhythm, good rotation on the ball. Let's check in with A.J. Well, Jim was just speaking about Daryl's defensive prowess. And when we were talking with Shaka Smart, he said he actually lets his players decide who they're going to match up with. So, so far this game, Daryl Morsell has been guarding Justin Moore a lot. And clearly he knows what he's doing as far as being a big defensive, uh, big 10 defensive player of the year last year. Shaka said he knows more about one-on-one -on -one than a lot of the coaching staff. That yeah, was interesting, <laughs> AJ, because I've never really heard a coach say, well, let the players decide. Prosper's wow. denied by Dixon. But there is a whistle. And what Shaka did say, though, Andrew, if you recall, and AJ, that we'll let him decide, but if, if the point guard wants to play to center, we're going to shut that down in a hurry. 
My favorite part of that conversation was seeing the look on your face, Jim, when you heard <laughs> that the players decide who they cover defensively. Yeah, that might have been a pretty good defensive effort just then <laughs> by Villanova, too. Dixon is called for the foul. I have to believe that Shaka Smart and company are delighted in the way they've come out and played here in the first 11 minutes or so of this game. Shaka was looking at this game as a great test for a team with so many new parts. He said it doesn't get any tougher than tonight. You're in an environment that's tough against the number 11 team in the country. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we, what we made of here against Villanova. And early on, they've answered the bell. And a foul is called on Cam Jones. Otherwise, that would have been a turnover. Yeah, that was a late grab by Jones. If he didn't touch and grab the offensive player, that ball like you just touched on, Andrew, that would have gone out of bounds. It would have been a turnover. As Marquette is prone to do, they're mixing up their pressure, picking up Villanova full court here. From time to time, you'll see that same 1-2-2 two, two look, and they'll double-team in the corners if they can. Gillespie's been very quiet so far in the first half. This is a matchup defense right now. You can tell by the guys when they start pointing. If you cut through the middle of the lane or go away, you see a lot of pointing. Samuels with five. And they were confused. Yeah, they were confused just then. Dude. A six-point Marquette lead, and Alan Gillespie so far tonight is 0 for 4 from the floor. Yeah, part of his problem is that here he gets a good look. That's generally one that he puts down. I mean, he's got good. But watch the length starts to close in on him. Two shots that he normally makes. Here's the length again coming at him. Gets you to think just a little bit on your jumper. Samuels for three. Off the front of the rim. Good work defensively on the glass again. Osper races up ahead. Marquette loves to get out in transition. And then this guy will slow you down a little bit. That may be an offensive foul, is it? And the second on Cam Jones. Freshman from Memphis is going to head right back to the bench. Very uncharacteristic Villanova three-point shooting so far tonight. Just two for ten. And the recognition, the recovery to the perimeter. Very good by Marquette so far. Here's some of that post-up isolation. They love to invert their guards, put them down on the blocks because they're good passers. No. Out of contact, no call, and Dixon capitalizes. Shock is smart. Not happy that there wasn't a foul call there. Prosper steps into a three. And the key words on what you just described, Andrew, is to step into the three. They're getting a lot of those step-in shots, which makes it easier to shoot the ball. Extra pass to Moore. See, that one there was a standstill catch and shoot. A little tougher to shoot the ball than having some rhythm going towards the basket. Yeah, good point. Second chance opportunity here for the Wildcats. Gillespie inside. Bounces it to Dixon. One bounce in the finish. Great look from Colin Gillespie. And timeout called by Marquette. Little rhythm back at the Villanova side. Number two jersey, so now he's wearing number 31. See if you can get a couple open looks, huh? New number. <laughs> Changes luck. I think Marquette is aware that he's wearing 31 yeah. right now. I don't think they're sneaking in. You could see that not making it on that left lob pass. Daniels takes it away. Villanova is shooting 60% on its two-point attempts. Just 18% on their three-point attempts and a turnover here. Great recovery by left just then to get a hand on it. And Morcell hits another from the outside. Well, you can see why he has that 20-point games. The way he's looking to shoot, very, very active in terms of sizing it up. And I love the way Marquette spreads the floor when they push it down the floor and they don't have a break. They come down, they don't squeeze the floor and get tight on one another. That's his second three. He has eight points here in the first half. 
Weth again playing very aggressive defense. Shot clock at five, number five for Villanova Moore, and it won't go. Lots of spread on the floor now. Good spacing. Moore sell. Not this time. Really looking for it though, isn't he? Why not? <laughs> the way it's been going on. In. Inside six minutes to go in the first half. Dixon at the scorer's table for Villanova. Great find, Daniels to Samuels. Villanova has figured it out that if they continue to put the ball on the floor going towards the basket, they'll get some switches. Lewis halfway down and out. Marquette leads by three. Marquette has never won here at Finneran Pavilion. 0-9 all time. Almost looked as if 10 guys at once wanted to take a breath just then. It <laughs> just kind of went almost into a neutral holding pattern. Shot clock down to two. Daniels. His corner three is no good. Boy, as Jay Wright was concerned about their shortening the clock a little bit with the various defenses. Nice push. Man, nice touch yeah. from Justin Lewis. Here's the benefit to Cole. Last four games, 33 assists and only nine turnovers. He gets it on a roll. Just sets everybody up. May not get the assist, but gets kind of like the hockey assist, if you will. Daniels. Yeah, that's one that he should have. Yeah, that, and that's where Villanova, if they put the ball on the floor, they should be able to get that little pull up. on the good pass. Great catch by Queth. Could not finish and tip to Samuels. Maybe just a touch long on the delivery. Oh, that was a bump, too. Queth got away with it. It'll be Villanova basketball. You get in the middle of the paint. That's what I meant. You drive that to the to the basket, Andrew. You're going to get two guys squeezing on you. And here's just an open shot. Nice little look by the point guard, Colin. Eight points for Justin Lewis. Gillespie and Daniels a combined 0 for 8 for Villanova. And Villanova has not been able to get into any type of rhythm in their half court offense. They'll take this though, Dixon. Well, when the defender falls down, I think you better score on that one. <laughs> Take advantage of that. That's a touchdown in football. <laughs> Elliott and Dixon got a hand on it. Eric Dixon continues to impress for Villanova. Yeah, staying away with the body, too, is so important for a big trying to get a blocked shot on the move for the guards. There's another foul on Stevie Mitchell. Time out of the floor with 3.35 to go in the first half. Villanova trying to crawl back. Dixon for two. Yeah, and two for 12 from the three-point shot. But I can guarantee you one thing. Jay Wright is saying, don't give up the three shot. If you have it, take it. But let's put the ball on the floor, maybe get to the middle of the paint, and see if we can get the Marquette players to leave their feet with the patented ball fake that most of the Villanova players have. Gillespie is finally on the board. Number 31 wasn't working, so they, they back clean the number two. two, and he's got his first bucket of the night. Or they put that through the washer and dryer yeah. cycles. Some quick work. Well, I'd like to get the washer to work that quickly in my house. Tied at 25. Prosper in the corner. Air ball, not even close. Now, this is an opportunity for a good shot to get the fans really involved. And Daniels does just that. And there's that drive to the basket, trying to get somebody to commit. And just as important for Marquette to come back down this end of the floor and steady the ship and make sure they get something. 7-0 run for Villanova. out to Prosper. Look at the ball action. And a foul called on Prosper. Momentum on Villanova's side right now. 
So an extra dribble to the basket. A little push off with the arm, the left arm, but gets away with it. No problem there. And that one I'm not sure about because he's moving. He hasn't established himself defensively on that one. And I think the defender really created the contact on that play. I think Shaka Smart agrees with you. Well, somebody does. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> See the difficulty of putting the ball on the floor, how guys are starting to use the dribble but push their, their off hand up. Ah, uh, Moore misses with the left hand. That's behind you. Both of these teams very good at putting it on the deck with a purpose. Lewis had it poked away. Great defense by Brandon Slater. Yeah, get back on defense. Stop complaining to the officials. Fifth Marquette turnover. Lesby around Igadaro. Well, that was his second trip along the right baseline. Smart little play to get the big guy moving, and then you roll your hips and shot, shot attempts. As we approach the final 90 seconds of the first half. Last seven Marquette trips. They're one for five with two turnovers. And Lewis hits a big shot for the Golden Eagles. Good call by Marquette coming out of that break. Going over has an opportunity right now, possibly two for one, but they don't really force any shots. They'll be able to play this straight up and probably get the last shot. Tough pass. Gillespie was not ready for it in a backcourt violation. Third Villanova turnover. So you have a little high screen and then you have a little pop right there. It's kind of like an exchange. It's not really a pick and pop because there's no pick there. And Lewis just glides away a little under 30% from the three-point strike this season at 27. He's got 11 points. He's in double figures for the 17th time in 19 games for Marquette. There it is again. Same look. And Lewis again. But this one will not go to the bottom. You notice it wasn't a pick. Just forced going over to play, pick up a double team. They've read that pretty well. Gillespie well, stepped back. No. And a three-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. And it looks like Shaka Smart wants to milk this a little bit. Yeah, I think Gillespie was thinking two for one just now. I do too. And, you know, he may get, in, he may get five seconds on the shot clock if they take this shot. You know, with about seven seconds left is when they generally will come at you. Here we go at seven. The defense by Villanova. It'll stay with Marquette, but just three seconds to shoot. Don't forget about the inbounder. That is Kolick. Morcel takes it, races up ahead, puts up a shot, and wow. gets the bounce. And Jay Wright able to quickly get a timeout. Is use it or lose it here in the first half. Marquette back up his sleeve, but you want to get somebody catching this ball long. Gillespie to the middle, they're going deep. Slater, long pass down, more, and that's not going to get there. See the trick play, though? Yeah, I like that. He was catching that. He was looking to shoot that over to the, the wing for a jumper, but not enough time to pull that one off. Marquette, this season. Part of the two to AJ's point defensively with Villanova looking at the Marquette defense is the length and size of the Marquette players across the board. They have length in the front court, but their guards are pretty big, and they are active, and they've been active in that first half, and it looks like they're going to start the same exact way with the activity out in the perimeter. They're trying to get it to Dixon on the blocks as much as they can. Moore hands off to Dixon. Shot clock at five. Dixon trying to maneuver around Queth. He cannot. And there's Lewis to grab the loose ball. 6-10 Queth factor defensively right off the get-go. More so quickly the other way. Won't go. And Dixon with the rebound. Couple of win streaks at stake. Marquette has won four in a row. Villanova has won its last six. Gillespie around Lewis. 
What a move from Colin Gillespie. Yeah, Lewis just lost his balance because of that little bit of a fake out front by Gillespie. Gillespie very good at using the reverse side of the basket to fend off any type of deflection or shot block. Tenth layup or dunk for Villanova tonight. And I think the, the mission will be set up for the threes after. Lewis doesn't get the bounce, and Slater is right there. If they have the three, they will take it. But they want to take a little bit of the probe, bring the probe into the offense, put it on the floor, see if they can get it to the paint. Get Dixon involved. Dixon's got a mismatch down low if they want to go to it. Once again, shot clock down to four. Gillespie has to put it up. What a big rebound by Lewis. Yeah, there were way too many of those in the first half for Villanova. And a wide open shot in the corner. Prosper can't knock it down, though. And a cold start for both teams to open up the second half. Gillespie slowly brings the ball up the floor. Villanova averages close to 20 seconds per possession, which is number 348 in the country. And based on what we've seen today, it's going to go over 20 seconds. And a steal by Morcel. Two on one. Prosper with Lewis. Prosper. Offensive foul. I don't know if Shaka Smart's going to like that one. There's the step in, Marcel. Very good defensively. Let's see if the defender has himself aligned properly. I'm not so sure. It's kind of a slide, if you will. Second foul called against Omax Prosper, the redshirt freshman from Montreal, and both of the fouls were on the offensive end. Yeah, I think that one's a block right there. I don't. I think you know with that charge block call, Andrew. I think you have to give an adjustment has to be made with the rule. Because when the offensive guy starts into his plant, there's no way for him to stop that forward motion. And if you have good defensive position or not, sometimes you get that ball more frequently. Sell on more is a heck of a matchup. Daniels rises but can't finish. Offensive rebound, Dixon. Samuels squeezes it back down to Dixon, and he's fouled. See how they're not afraid to make an interior pass, if, even if you're only two or three feet away from one another. Now watch the catch. Get the rebound, so they kick it out. Now watch this pass here. About two feet away, I'm not afraid. Once I draw a player to my, my chest, I'm going to release the basketball. Very unselfish teams out here. And this is the first free throw attempt of the night for Villanova. Dixon's done an excellent job, 81% at the line this season. We asked Jay Wright about Dixon's growth. And last night, Wright telling us that he's composed, intelligent in the low post, and smart with his decision-making. And he pointed to Sunday's game against Butler when he had a career-high four assists and no turnovers. Not bad for a big guy. Yeah, sure was. And they average about 20 free-throw attempts a game. So, to your point, it's taken a while to get that on the board. Full, full court action here to just kind of reverse the tables a little bit, take some time off the clock. Make Marquette think a little bit. Lewis right at Daniels. Wild shot. Yeah, it sure was because Daniels had never established defensive position. I think Lewis could have taken his time a bit. Daniels took too many steps. And that's the fifth Villanova turnover. Now watch this offensively. You see Daniels is in trouble right there, and he's going to be in trouble again, right again. And I think with the size of Lewis at 6'7", he could have taken his time a little bit right there and just put one up off the glass. So far this half, Marquette is 0 for 4 with a turnover. They trail by 3. Kolick inside. No. And out of bounds, last touch by Villanova. And now Marquette 0-14. And when he's on the bench, they're plus six. Wow. 
Is he making those numbers up? No, I believe him. And you know who loves those numbers? His mother, Betty, who's watching tonight. She's a huge Villanova fan. And she's very proud of Michael for that one. Elliott from the outside. And we're tied at 33. Nice little catch and shoot. A guy who, at the end of games, is generally a guy who looks for some opportunities. Moore attacking. Yep, never got the last foot down for any strength. Here they come the other way quickly. Elliott left alone. Not this time. And Gillespie with the rebound. That's exactly what Marquette likes to do, though. They like to rebound it, push it up, and get it down the sideline as much as possible. Fifth rebound for Gillespie tonight. Trying to add to his point total, and he cannot. Still stuck at seven. There it is again. To the right side, the right wing. Kolick will launch. Kolick's just a 23% three-point shooter. Yeah, maybe a touch too quick on those on that second series coming down the floor. So far this half, Marquette one for eight, Villanova one for six. Start to think that maybe getting to the free throw line might be a deciding factor in this game tonight. Daniels from the corner. Villanova is three for 16 from beyond the arc. It's a team that came in number two in the Big East, shooting 36% from deep. Morcel surveying the scene. Over to Lewis for three. It's good! Yeah, a big factor on that play, Andrew, was Quest coming up to almost pretend as if he was going to set a screen. That allowed Morcel to go by and have some room to operate and make that quick kick to the corner. That's the eighth Marquette three tonight. Lewis leading all scorers with 14 points. Slater trying to answer. He does. How about that for Slater? He was one for his last 19 from deep, but he knocked that one down. And now a turnover. Gillespie with Moore trying to join him. Gillespie all the way. No. And out of bounds. Yeah. It'll stay with Villanova. And Elliott's maybe hurt over there a little bit. As he hit the stanchion. He's lost his shoe. Holding on to that left knee just a little bit. Looks like Elliott is okay. Yeah, so watch how this the big guy comes out and what's going on behind him. Nothing at all. The opportunity to drive and kick. But it's always good when you give one up to come back down the other end and get an open shot. Slater nails that one like you mentioned. And channeling Josh Hart. Brandon Slater wearing jersey number three. And at halftime, it was Josh Hart who was... Having his jersey on her. We'll show you that coming up. Very nice ceremony here at Gunner and Pavilion. Nice contact out front there. Look at the way Moore looks to bounce people back. Nice luck. Samuels throws it down. That's what they try to do, Andrew. They try to invert the floor. By that, what I mean is they put the, instead of having the bigs down there operating, they love to have the guards because they're so good at passing the basketball. Fans making some noise. Trying to put pressure on this young Marquette team. And yeah, they're trying to get Lewis involved. And Lewis, no good. Wow. Tipped around and Samuels tracks it down. Get a bucket here. This place will go nuts. Slip by Samuels. Samuels hesitated just a touch on that play. Didn't realize how wide open he was. Good exchange out front with Gillespie down his end, running the traffic. 7-0 run for Villanova. Jones has been quiet tonight. How about that shot? No good, but the offensive board, no. Offensive foul on Igadaro.
so you look down low and a nice catch and go by Samuels underneath the basket but more remember they love to pass the ball in the interior only a couple of feet away and there's that little bit of a hesitation I didn't think he realized just how open he was going to the basket eight points eight rebounds for Jermaine Samuels who has been dealing with a left adductor strain over the last 10 days but Jay Wright told us that he thought that Sunday's game against Butler was the best Samuels has looked over the last 10 days. So he was encouraged that Jermaine's getting close to 100%. 14 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. Another Marquette foul. That's their fourth of the half. And not one on Villanova as of yet. So working their way towards the free throw line in terms of the bonus. And that's a dangerous place if you're Marquette because yep. Villanova in Big East games this year is shooting 86% from the free throw line. And 81% overall. There's the inverted offense again to kick one out. Slater again. Now numbers the other way. I tell you, the bigs are starting to play underneath. They're pushing and shoving. Jones misfires. If they can try to get Dixon sliding towards the basket for their pump and go. They can cut towards the basket, but they get him in the post anyway. That's the left hand jumper. Dixon, hook, I should say. Oh, he follows his own shot. Yeah, he's got that little jump hook in the lane. And the quick follow. And all of a sudden, a little spacing on the scoreboard for Villanova. Their largest lead of the night. Where will Marquette turn? Who's going to step up for the Golden Eagles? Jones turns it over. What a rough game for the freshman Cam Jones. Eighth Marquette turnover. Moore for three. Hello. Got to start thinking of a time. Yeah, there goes the timeout. I think they got to get Lewis back on the floor. Stan. They're very, very well connected, both defensively, but I think as important at the offensive end, they just move around as if it's five guys moving at once rather than three at a time, two at a time. David Joplin has checked in for the first time tonight for Marquette. And a foul. Called on Caleb Daniels. Right back to break. Villanova up 45 to 36. People think unusual circumstances right before this game and he definitely emphasized his favorite memory was that national championship game he also has vivid memories of coach jay wright both on the floor and off the floor he credits wright with not only helping him develop into the nba player he is but the man off the court yeah well said thank you very much aj as elliott hits the three and the lead is down to six as we approach the midway point of the second half Andrew, I think you're going to see both of these teams focus on the post and driving it towards the post. And that gives Villanova an advantage because they have no team, one team foul at this point, but four against Marquette. Try to get to that line and get to that bonus. Here's Moore. After a hot start, Moore has been quiet. Marcel thought about it. And now he'll set up the Marquette offense. That will help. Freshman Joplin over to Kolek with the shot clock down to five. Good defense here by Villanova. Joplin for three. Yes! David Joplin. Just a 29% three-point shooter, and he's on the board here. And sometimes you don't want to see the freshman get the ball with three seconds left of the shot clock, <laughs> especially on the road. He initially committed to Texas to play for Shaka Smart, but he's a Wisconsin native, and when Shaka went to Marquette, Joplin followed suit. All four of Marquette's field goals this half are threes, and there's a three for Caleb Daniels. Good stride into that one. 39% shooter from the field, but he gets that rhythm and a good shoulder turn to the basket. Watch out. Last trip down the floor looked like Marquette went with the zone. They picked it apart. Kolek 
tips out to the perimeter. Elliott just steps in and drains a three. And it's one of those stride jumpers that cleft with that hand on the basketball off the offensive glass. This is a very good offensive rebounding team, but not really getting much mileage out of it for Marquette. Elliott had a career-high 25 last week against DePaul. He's got nine tonight thanks to three threes. Look at them trying to post up Gillespie down low. Now he comes out, versatile game. Gillespie right around Kolick. Good defense by Morcel. Shot clock at two. Slater has to put it up. And the long rebound out to Kolick. And all of a sudden, the last 90 seconds, Marquette has got an offensive shift going. Joplin nearly had his second. Good looking shot, wasn't it? No doubt. Brookfield, Wisconsin native. Put a dump down for Dixon. Just hasn't been able to get in his hands. There you go. They got it here. Kola comes over to help. Dixon. Count it! And one! They tried it on the right side to get Dixon involved. It wasn't there. That was just a great example of the patience of Novick. But Dixon has really been playing well for them. Last two games averaging 15 points per game. Came in averaging at nine. So his numbers are up. And looking for number 15 tonight. He's got it. And that ties a career high for Eric Dixon. I'd like to see Marquette get something going towards the basket a little bit. Marcel can really make it happen if he gets an open lane to slice through. There's Marcel, but this one will not go down. I think they want him on a quick hitter rather than a couple of bounces where Villanova can slide back on him. Villanova plus seven on the glass tonight. As AJ told us before the game, Villanova's 11-0 this season when they out-rebound the opponent. Gillespie extra pass. Samuels for three. Dixon is a push. foul, yeah. They missed Dixon. He was wide open on that high pick and roll type look, the exchange. He was standing in the middle of the lane, and Jay Wright's squad, they don't miss an open guy too often, but that trip they missed there, and it could have been a layup. Samuel started the year 9 of 15 from deep, but since then he is four for his last 36 And he has not made a three-pointer since December 17th at Creighton Pretty active trying to go to the basket Another quick foul called on Villanova Slater that time with the hands extended Second foul on Brandon Slater He's been nursing an ankle injury of late and that's why when Villanova was up big against Butler on Sunday Jay Wright got him out early give him a little extra rest and actually got Gillespie and Moore off the floor too they played 29 minutes each they average about 33 so some fresh legs here a couple of days later a different competition tonight rather than that's going to be a shoulder down and go the other way on Morcell, that's his first. Watch the shoulder come down all of a sudden, right here. See how he leads with that shoulder? Even though the Daniels is moving on the play, he's got legal defensive position. Who creates the contact on that play, the defender or the offensive, offensive player? Good call from the officials. Four Marquette offensive fouls in this ball game tonight. 6.20 to go. Nice hands. Got a layup if you hurry. Up ahead is Elliott. Samuels and Moore back. Elliott finishes with the left hand. Nice decision on the deflection, the steal, and then the thought process of kicking that ball ahead. Clock stop, yeah, I think. Clock did not start. No, well, I guess it did start and then stopped <laughs> one second later. Here we go. Six minutes left. Up here, switches the jam and exchange. It goes man to man. It's a hand check for Marcel. Second foul on Daryl Morcel. 
And that'll be a one and one now for Villanova. And this is where it could get dangerous for Marquette with the way Villanova shoots free throws. Yeah, it's been a work in progress, but that was probably one of the goals that Jay Wright was hoping for. Get those guys to the free throw line where they're very, very good. The last four games, Villanova is shooting 93% from the line. 14 and 15 on the last one. Just when we start speaking yeah. about it. Now every Villanova fan thinks that we jinxed it. <laughs> Five and a half to go. Don't get stagnant if you're Marquette. Get some action. Play from the ball. Make sure you get an opportunity for a lane drive. Lewis at Dixon. Good matchup there. Dixon with good defense. Lewis could not get a good look. Well, Dixon was a little under the Lewis was a little under the basket, and Dixon kept him there with his body strength. Then Villanova closed out Marquette. Well, they closed quickly defensively. In the baseline, a little pivot back to the baseline, but look at Dixon never gives him the opportunity to get out away from the backboard, making that a much more difficult shot. Gillespie to the corner to Daniels. Shot clock down to four. Daniels will put one up. And the rebound to Marquette. Villanova has now gone three minutes without scoring. Kolek trips. That was a trip. You're right. There was a foot in there by Dixon, I think. You see a foot come out? Yeah. Turnover, though, by Marquette. That is their 10th. Comes to drive. And I think there's some contact down below. Looks like Shaka Smart is saying that should have been a foul. Very casually <laughs> chatting it up at the scorer's table. Now there's a foul called on Villanova. That's going to go on Dixon. His third. Four team fouls against the Wildcats, and Chuck is still chatting with the officials. Shaka actually faced Villanova last year when he was at Texas. They hosted Villanova, and the Wildcats got the better of Shaka and the Longhorns. Marcel for three. And rebounded by Samuel. I was just going to say that Marquette is just going around the perimeter, really not making Villanova play them off the balance as they were earlier in this game. Ten rebounds for Jermaine Samuels tonight. Gillespie for three. Nice track down. That's a good rebound for a guard. Wants to run. Elliott, shooter. And he hits. Elliott with his fourth three. I love the way Elliott plays. He runs hard because he knows the harder he runs, the more open he's going to be, especially in transition. All 14 of his points have come here in the second half. Samuels guarded by Lewis. Good defensive effort there by Lewis. Nice work again. Oh, Cola cuts in, Great. saves it to Lewis. Spread the floor a little bit. Marquette has a chance to take the lead. Cola. No. Is that the shot they wanted? I don't think so. I don't think so. Percentage-wise, I don't think so. Especially and three minutes left. Jay Wright calls timeout with three minutes to go. Shaka smarts. Tell you he is. If he gets an open one, I think it's going skyward. Villanova in a scoring drought of four and a half minutes. They have watched Marquette cut it down to one. There's the post-up action. They try to get a little post-up for the guard. If you double it, they'll pick you apart. Nice hands, though. It was Elliott. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, he gives it right back. Uh, you can't throw that one. 6'10 guy moving towards the basket. You drop one off his knee. Not a good decision. Villanova has turned it over on three straight possessions. And now a five-minute drought for the Wildcats. I wouldn't be surprised to see, to get, see if they can try to get more to do a little post-up action also. 
Gillespie right down the middle to the hoop. Counted and one! One of the things Villanova does so well, and Gillespie is probably as good as anybody on the team, is the jump stop and the ball fake. Watch how he comes down off two feet right there. Ball fake. Defender, 6'10", slides by and has to reach because they're out of position. They all do it so well. But oh boy, was this ever a great time to execute it. And plus, you put about a 90% free throw shooter at the line. We already jinxed him once, Jim. Let's, oh, sorry, let's yeah. take it easy. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> Gillespie into double figures. He's got 10 points. 54-50, Villanova on top. Shocker wants this to be very, very wide as they set the high screen for a backdoor cut, possibly. Villanova students making some noise behind the basket. Two minutes to go. Lewis down low. Lewis, great move for two. See, the last time Dixon had him pinned in against the baseline, he tried to pin him there. That time, though, Lewis had the bounce going towards the basket and was able to get his shoulders on the inside. Terrific move there by Lewis to come back when they needed an answer. Marquette has one timeout remaining. Villanova with two. Same setup. Gillespie got there. Now spins over to Dixon. Dixon spinning around, missed it, and it's tipped around. Dixon fighting for it. He still has it, trying to call timeout. Tie up. tie up in the possession arrow favors Marquette, and Shaka Smart with a big fist pump in the air. His team's getting the ball back. Well, his team's getting it back because of the effort. Villanova put the effort to it also, but look at the way two players go down initially. And Marcel, you see, notice the way Marcel came down carefully to go for the ball without jumping on Dixon just then. If he just flat out jumps on Dixon, they'll call a foul on that for jumping on the player. He kind of arches his back and goes down and grabs the ball. Smart play on his part. Gillespie got poked in the eye on that last possession. Something to keep an eye on. Wow, look at this move. Lewis <laughs> ties it at 54. Wow, was that ever a move? As Shaka Smart said, they'll call his number at the end of games. Don't be surprised if Elliott gets involved, but they want Lewis to be involved in the last minute of this game. Timeout Villanova. We're back in 37. Baltimore, he has approximately 30 family members in attendance tonight. Trying to see if his Golden Eagles can pull the upset with one minute to go. Moore defended by Morcell. Trying to get him into the post. Let's see if he makes a pass out of it. He decides to go. Wow, and it's play. blocked by Quest. Into the corner. And last touch by Marquette. Quest with the timing just then also. The shot clock is at five. Slater to inbound. Later, having a tough time getting it slip. in. Finds Dixon. Dixon inside. No good in the rebound to Lewis. And a straight up defense now for Villanova. Eight second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Fans on their feet. Lewis has had the hot hand lately for Marquette. Wow, they don't turn it over that often when Kolek has it. Lewis for three. It's wow. good! Timeout Villanova! Justin Lewis has 21, and he gives Marquette a three-point lead. Keep the ball. They'll try to keep the ball in here for a second or two. And then when it, it'll be interesting to see just when do they choose to foul if they're going to do it. Moore for the tie. No good. Tipped around. Nice Still tip. loose. Three seconds left. Gillespie retreats. Throws it up at the horn. No good. And Marquette pulls the upset. How about that tip by Kolek, too, coming down at the offensive?